You're watching The Wellness Hour Live. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, we're talking about painkillers. Uh, according to my first guest, they're being over-prescribed by doctors. He is known as the herbal pharmacist. He is a PharmD, and uh, he has strong opinions about this particular topic. Uh, his name is David Foreman. Doctor, or I almost said Dr. Foreman, but you are. You're a PharmD. Yep, yeah, exactly. So, uh, and, and I'll call you David. If I would okay prefer that. I'm not hung up on the right. uh, formality of doctor, that's for sure. Okay, good. Now, you, <laughs> for people that don't know you, I mean, you spend most of your time, we met you through your publicist, across the country lecturing on what? What's your topic? Uh, really, I, it boils down to healthy lifestyle. Okay. I mean, granted, I'm called the herbal pharmacist, and so supplements are part of what I do, but really it's about healthy lifestyle, and I do TV, radio, speaking, writing, all on that topic of just trying to get people to, to live a healthier lifestyle and okay. be realistic about it. Sometimes okay, people good. aren't. They get a little faddish, and I'm not a fad kind of guy. You're not into fads. Okay. No, balance is all key. Now, for people that are new to the Wellness Hour live show, you know, this is a real interview. He didn't pay to be on the show, and, uh, and I'm not endorsing you in any way. And so this is very interesting, uh, or at least for me, to find out kind of a little bit more about you. So, and, and the other thing people need to know is you're not selling supplements. I mean, you don't, pr I asked you on, in our green room, you don't sell supplements. No. You don't make money from those things. No, I, actually, you I, have can't a radio show. I can't stand when people do, actually. Well, that bothers me. Show. Yep, exactly. You used to have a pharmacy, right. a retail pharmacy, kind of retired early in a way. Is that right? <laughs> According to a lot of people, I retired way too early, but yeah, I retired okay. over 15 years ago. So let's get into the topic. You call it a slippery slope for killing pain. So tell me what's, uh, what's going on. Yeah, the slippery slope is this. I, um, for a lot of people with pain, we're not talking about the people that just had surgery or you know, just had you know, a tooth removed or were hit by a car. We're talking about people that just have maybe headaches or a little joint pain, muscle pain. It all starts so benign. Usually it starts at your local pharmacy uh, or even grocery store and you're buying those over-the-counter painkillers. Okay. And after a while, and there's, there's a lot of uh, research out there showing that you know, a 3% of the population that take over-the-counter painkillers actually take exceedingly above what you're supposed to in a daily amount. 3%. What are these, by the way? What, ibuprofen? Well, like ibuprofen, uh, naproxen, uh, acetaminophen, those are the, the three biggies. Um, aspirin doesn't even fall in there anymore. I don't think anybody really uses aspirin for pain anymore. But those would be the keys that you can buy okay. over the counter. And so you take those and maybe you take too many of them and it doesn't quite take care of the pain because you're not really addressing the root of the problem. And next thing you know, you're at your doctor. Your doctor will step it up a little bit and use a probably a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Uh, like? Well, uh, again, naproxen could be there, ibuprofen could be there, but um, uh, like a Vioxx or you know, something along those lines, COX-2 inhibitors. Your pain's still not necessarily going away. Um, oftentimes people continue to take more of those. Again, we're not necessarily addressing the root of why they have but what they, they have. But they work for these people. Some they do, some they don't. Because I mean, being in pain is tough. It, exactly. And, and I'm hoping, by the way, at the end of this, you're gonna tell us how to get off these. Mets. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. That, that would be my objective okay, so, is to try to teach people how to do that. So this natural progression happens. Yep. Okay. So they're taking more and more and then what? Well, next thing you know, you're, you're uh, on narcotics. You know, they'll give you a narcotic painkiller. Narcotic painkillers, all they do is deaden the sensory for pain. They do nothing other than that. So, um, and they'll usually cause drowsiness, uh, dizziness, you know, impair your uh, ability to operate heavy machinery, those kinds of things. And, and the, the reason I really don't want people to get to there is that they're highly addictive. As a matter of fact, the uh, government is now changing the, the drug class for the, the drug hydrocodone. Hydrocodone is found in Vicodin, Lortab is the most popular probably. But the people that are on them, they don't want to be on them either. But they have to be, be on them or they can't function. You'd be surprised. I was in Chicago not long ago and um, I, I met this woman who, a uh, chronic migraine sufferer, and after 20 years realized she was addicted to her medication. It all started out very harmless. Okay. Okay. You know, she started out taking uh, over the counter pain medicines for her headaches. They didn't quite work anymore. Went to the doctor, they prescribed, you know, a, a migraine type medication, had a little caffeine, a little acetaminophen, and butalbital. That didn't quite work anymore. Next thing you know, this woman's addicted to, okay. uh, you know, narcotics. And she ended up in the story on the news. It was kind of funny. I was in Chicago doing my own news segment, and this woman was on the news the next day after, you know, I did my segment. And, you know, she said she had to go into two weeks inpatient to be removed from all the medications she was taking for her headaches. And then, you know, it was finally drug free. But this was an innocent housewife, mother of, so I forget how many children. So obviously you want to yeah. catch these people early. Yeah, exactly. Somebody that, watching this, that they're on that path. 
right? Uh, there, there's a lot of people. I mean, so, there's millions of people watching right now that are in that boat right now, not even realizing they're addicted. Okay, okay. So what do you do? At the early stage, what do you do? And then, of course, at that 20-year stage, 15-year on these uh, medications. Uh, well, let's start. What, let's start. Let's, let's start. Them? Let's start without even getting onto the slope. Okay. If you have pain, my first thing is to encourage you to dig deeper and find out why do you have pain. I'm going to use my own personal story if you're cool with that. Okay. Recently, I had an earache. All right. And I and um, I I thought I had you know an ear infection. Came home, went to a friend of mine who's a DO, and I was like, Hey, Stephanie, you know what? I think I have an ear infection. And she's like, well, I'll prescribe an antibiotic. And I'm like, I'm an herbal pharmacist. There's no way I'm taking a drug for an, an ear infection. They're self-limiting. So we started talking more about it. I'm like, well, you know, I flew home. And I said, my ear never bothered me. So I don't really think it's an infection necessarily. But there's something else going on. The root of my ear pain was actually <laughs> coming from a trigger point in my shoulder. OK. Again, looking at the root of the problem. So we go to a chiropractor? The, we addressed the trigger point, a massage. OK. So a lot of times we have these pains. You we need to like dig great, to the root. You sound like a great patient. You go to the doctor. What can you do for me? <laughs> I'm like, no, say, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. No, but it, it, okay. so my point is get to the root of it. For the majority of us, the root of our pain is inflammation. So in, in, that, in the natural health world, we have a lot of different things that we can do to help alleviate the pain. There's even clinical studies behind this stuff. Turmeric, phenomenal. I mean, it's a great antioxidant, great anti-inflammatory. It's one of my favorite herbs uh, for kind of a catch-all. There's no cure-all, so let's not go there. So t turmeric. Turmeric, yep, great. Even Spice. Dr. Oz likes that, yeah, so you, you can, know it's good. Yeah, <laughs> you can sprinkle it on your food, okay. or you can buy it in a supplement capsule, whichever way you want to go. What's the mechanism? Why, in the, why is it so good? It has a multi-pronged effect because it's an antioxidant. Yeah, by using antioxidants, we neutralize free radicals. Free radicals can cause inflammation okay. in the body. Um, it has mild COX-1, COX-2 inhib inhibitory problems. I know, kind of cool, right? So yeah. it, it actually has those I didn't chemicals. think you were going to know the answer to that, by the way. <laughs> but no, as a pharmacist, I'm a you pharmacist. Guys, this is what you know. Okay, so without it, okay, so what else can you do? Another one reduce is, inflammation? Another one comes from hops. Same hops they make beer with. It's kind of cool. I've been traveling around with this little bag of green stuff. People think I've been hanging out in Colorado too long. But hops, amazing stuff. There's actually an extract, uh, again, science behind you drink it. Do you like tea? No, actually... Uh, you need a little more concentrated. The stuff I use is called Perlux, and it's an in the ingredient. So okay. if you go to your local health food store or pharmacy, you want to look for Perlux. And That's the active it's a specific, ingredient in there. Exactly. Okay. Um, and it's actually COX-2 specific. Why is that so important? Uh, and I'm throwing like technical terms around. I hate when I do that, yeah, and I hate when other people do that. So there's uh, an inflammatory process that happens in the body. COX-1 okay. and COX-2 are part of that. And you want to inhibit those to cut down on inflammation. The problem is when you inhibit COX-1, you get stomach acid buildup. So those people that have taken aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, and you get that burning stomach okay. sensation, that's because those aren't specific. So the COX-2 is really what you want because it helps decrease inflammation. And these, are herbs. Scrum, these are all herbs. All herbs, you all know, natural. You talk about this on your radio show, your blog, yeah. all of these things. Cool thing is- Because we're just about out of time. So if they want to know these anti-inflammatory yeah. herbs, they go to your website. Definitely. Okay, nutrition, a, a word on that. Uh, easily get refined processed foods out of your diet a diet really high in protein can actually trigger more inflammation in the joints so getting off uh, off of a real high protein diet especially animal protein so beef pork okay. chicken um, and then uh, stop cooking with the oils seriously you know vegetable high oils protein, when you mean high protein like lots of meat what about three or four ounces of chicken no that's fine it's the people that get obsessive the people that you know are used to do the atkins diet they'd end up with a lot okay. more inflammation in their body so three or four ounces of chicken yep. some clean good protein clean good quality protein yeah exactly clean protein get rid of the you know the processed starchy box stuff just so don't vegetables. ever buy that stuff eat fruits and vegetables don't fry anything. Get those those bad oils out of your diet. Again, you know, vegetable oils are probably evil. And the pain goes away. Amen, brother. <laughs> so you're saying, like, maybe see chiropractic, go to the root cause, change your diet. Exactly. Reduce inflammation, take some herbal remedies. Get exercise. We didn't even talk about that, but get some more exercise, too. It really helps with pain and inflammation. So how does somebody find out more about you? Because everybody want look, and we said that, or I said that, people on medications want to be off of them, but they don't know what to do. Uh, herbalpharmacist.com and don't stop your medication without going to your healthcare provider. That's never a good idea. Okay, good. I just get, I, it's just not a smart thing. As the pharmacist in me, don't go, to, don't do All the right. meds. Final message, somebody watching this, even 20 years, they're on heavy meds or they have a spouse or a partner that's on a lot of medications. They're lethargic, they feel lousy, they can't function. What do you say to them? Uh, What's the first step? First step is go to your doctor and talk about how you can slowly get off your medication. Second step is to look at 
adding some of the supplements we talked about means they will have a more uh, a more of an immediate effect. Okay. Uh, second, th uh, third thing would be to really modify your diet. Look for those things that might be triggering inflammation. And last but not least, uh, or maybe go back to the doctor and talk about look, looking at the what possible root of your pain might be and addressing that directly. Because like I talked about with my ear, the pain really wasn't in my ear, it was in my shoulder. It was a trick. Not in my head like you thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to thank you for coming to the show. Very thank interesting. You so much. We're going to have you back to talk about other topics. Awesome. You've been watching the Wellness Hour Live. We'll be right back.